Broccoli for depression. That's what today's video is about. We treat depression with Prozac, ketamine, electroconvulsive therapy, and broccoli. Wait, broccoli? Hi, I'm Dr. B, and I make educational videos on topics that I find interesting. Stay until the end to learn what food is even more potent than broccoli for depression. Depression is a common mental illness throughout the world, and approximately 280 million people in the world suffer. And even in the United States alone, there's an estimated 20 million people who took antidepressants in the year 2020. But what if I told you you could get some help for your depression by shopping in the produce aisle of your local grocery store? The magic from broccoli isn't because it's green, and it's not from the fiber, although that is positive, but instead, the magic comes because of its chemical makeup and what those chemicals transform into, into your blood and into your brain. Broccoli contains a potent plant compound, sulforaphane. This is the key ingredient. But to understand why sulforaphane, and therefore broccoli, can help with depression, let's do a deep dive into depression. There are four cellular processes that research would suggest contribute to depression. First is oxidative stress. Second is inflammation. Third is ferroptosis and four is autophagy. Oxidative stress occurs when an oxygen molecule, known as a free radical, bounces around inside your cell and damages important molecules like genetic material with your DNA or with protein, which is really important for all sorts of cell functions, or lipids, which make up cell membrane. Now, because your brain and your neurons have a very high level of oxygen, these areas are in particular sensitive and prone to oxidative stress from these bouncing oxygen molecules. The second process associated with depression is inflammation. And this has been demonstrated experimentally by injecting small bacterial particles called LPS into patients and mice. This produces inflammation and can produce depressive symptoms. And individuals with major depression have LPS elevated inflammatory markers measured in their blood. Ferroptosis is also seen in depression, and this is a process of premature brain cell death that occurs from abnormal iron accumulation in neurons and nerve cells. And the final process seen in those with depression is known as autophagy. And this is the body's natural process of cleaning out and cleaning up dead cells. Abnormal autophagy means that cells accumulate. This is really important in other neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, but is also found in depression. So all four of these cellular processes are linked together by a common pathway. This is known as NFR2. And activation of this pathway increases the activity of all the genes promoting these cellular processes. So activating the NFR2 pathway reduces oxidative stress, reduces inflammation, it helps prevent premature cell death from iron accumulation, and it promotes your body and brain to clean up dead cells and promote autophagy. Fluoxetine or Prozac, this is thought to have its effects by promoting the same NFR2 pathway. And ketamine, a newer generation antidepressant, also acts partially by way of the NFR2 pathway. Functional imaging studies demonstrate decreased NFR2 uptake in the prefrontal cortex in those with major depressive disorder. So what does this have to do with broccoli? Well, remember the plant compound from broccoli, sulforaphane? Well, sulforaphane is a potent activator of this same NFR2 pathway, not unlike Prozac or ketamine, except sulforaphane is safe, it's non-toxic, it's very potent, naturally derived, doesn't have any side effects, it has low cost, and it's very bioactive. Now, Additional things that sulforaphane can do, it also promotes neurogenesis. This means it makes new neurons grow. This is unusual. It also will promote mitochondrial health. Mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell, and it's really important for nerve cells because they use a lot of energy and they require a lot of power. In broccoli, sulforaphane occurs as an inactive precursor. This is known as glucoraphanin. This is activated to its active form of sulforaphane by cutting, chewing, or grinding in a smoothie. There are some enzymes in the colon that can activate it as well. Your blood levels will peak in one to two hours after eating, and these substances can cross the blood-brain barrier and accumulate in the brain. Now cooking, which many people do for taste with broccoli, will actually inactivate the enzyme that converts glucoraphanin into its active form. This can be easily countered by sprinkling mustard seed powder on your broccoli. It will provide some zip, and the necessary enzymes to convert broccoli from its inactive to its active form. There's a magical food that's even better than broccoli, 
broccoli sprouts have been shown to have a much higher level as much as 100 times sulforaphane levels that mature broccoli has. And it turns out it's really easy to grow your own broccoli sprouts. Simple, quick, cheap, and easy. Now, if that doesn't fit your lifestyle, there are a number of supplements available containing sulforaphane on the market. But be careful and do research because as with many supplements, not all of these are equivalents. Some suggestions are prostaphane, BRQ, Abmacol, and Crucera SGS. These have been vetted by other labs. That's broccoli for depression. Thanks for watching. If you found this interesting, try these other videos on major depression or the gut-brain connection. There's also a link below to a more comprehensive talk on the benefits of sulforaphane by Dr. Rhonda Patrick. Look at that in the comments below. And please don't forget to hit subscribe.